I know him. That's Sartorius' lawyer. But what's he doing here? Well, well, well. A young blossom. So full of potential. Yet so easy to destroy. Say your prayers. Say my seat. Yeah! Oh man, do we have a weird deck to talk about today. So this is Howard X. Miller and his completely made up deck from me because all of the cards he used in the show, other than like card destruction, were completely made up for him. So I have decided to take the place of a deck builder and I've decided to build him a deck out deck that is super annoying and not fun at all just to make sure that there's still one deck out there that everybody hates to watch because it's what I like to do. So... Let's start looking at Howard X. Miller's deck out deck made by Casual Cooper. We have the Sangan. That's a good little search card. We have the Sasuke Samurai. I will highly doubt that they'll ever pull this off, but maybe they will. They have the Morphing Jar number twos. These cards are annoying as hell and I hate them. We have the Spirit Reaper. Spirit Reaper is annoying as hell and I hate and love him. We have Needle Worms. Very good for deck out decks. We have the Morphing Jars, very annoying. Card Destructions, with a combo with Sasuke Samurai number 3, very annoying. The Dark World Dealings, very annoying. We have Graceful Charity, technically, whatever. One Day of Peace, very annoying. Pot of Greed, technically it's whatever, you just need it to get more deck out cards. Shallow Grave, comboed with Morphing Jar number 2, Morphing Jar number 1, or Needle Worm, hella horrible. We have the MSTs, just classic helpful cards. We have the Big Bang Shots, honestly not that useful unless put on Sasuke Samurai for its effect. We have Compulsory Activate or Evacuation Device. This card is also annoying as hell. We have Threatening Roar, annoying as hell. And we have Robin Zombie, the only card in here that probably isn't that annoying and, you know, is completely fair. Like this slows down the deck, thank God. So, we're talking about Howard X. Miller. He was an annoying guy Jaden had to duel and was... Oh my god, he almost got Jaden. I don't know how he didn't. I honestly don't know how he didn't. It was a crazy duel. But here we are. This is the most annoying deck I could possibly think of in my own head. Using cards that I hoped were at least GX-centered. They might not even be GX Season 2-centered, but they are GX-ish. As close as I could get. Most annoying deck I could get for the most annoying character I've ever seen. So here we are, you can yell, you could scream, but it's still in the series. Whoever wants to be the most annoying, horrible person, this is the deck for you. I made sure there was something for you all out there, for you crazy people. So overall, what this guy likes to do is he could search for his annoying monster with Sangan. Sasuke Samurai can make the opponent draw seven cards. Wolverine Jar number two is really good for deck out and thinning out your opponent's deck and your own technically, um, if you mess up. Uh, Spear Reaper is for a little bit of stall to give him time to get the cards he needs. He has Needle Worms to deck out your opponent. You have Triple Morphe Jar to deck out your opponent while giving yourself new hand. Card Destruction to deck out your opponent and technically yourself. Dark World Dealings to deck out your opponent and technically yourself. One Day of Peace to stall and to slowly deck out each player. Um, we got Shallow Graves with the combos of all these cards to deck out your opponent. We have the MSTs, very nice. Big Bang Shots specifically for the Sasuke Samurai, unless you want to go really aggressive with Morphing Jar. Let's see Morphing Jar with Triple Big Bang Shot, be awesome. Compulse to stall, you know, give yourself some more time, or to put one of these cards back in your hand just in case you want to do their effect again. Uh, we have Threatening Wars to stall, and we have Robin Zombies for deck out. Guess what? This man is the most annoying creature in the, in the series, and yes, I said creature, and I don't know what to do with him. He's like a lawyer or something, just the worst kind of person. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes in this series. Now, talking about his stats, it should be very easy to tell where his stats are going to go. Can I get them on screen right now? And looking at those stats, we are a very one-sided character here. Okay? Super one-sided. So, let's get into the stats one by one. Attack stat. His highest attack is literally Sangen and Sasuke Samurai at 1,000. His attack stat is ass. Yes, he has Big Bang Shot, but that's nothing. His attack stat is complete ass. There's nothing to do here. The most you should do is attack with Sasuke Samurai to pull off the effect and use uh, Sangan just for searching these other cards, the one you think is more important. 
Overall, don't use this man for attack. He will never win by damage. This deck will not win by damage. It's just not going to happen. Moving on to the speed stat. That's where things get a little bit problematic. This man be too fast, but because he's also making your opponent faster, I couldn't make it go above the bar because it's speeding up two people at once. So, speed stat, Sasuke Samurai is speed for your opponent, technically. This is not for you. Zangan, that's speed for you, it searches. Morphing Jar, speed for you and your opponent, it searches. Spirit Reaper, this is not speed. Uh, Needle Worm, this is speed, not speed either. Uh, Morphing Jar, this is speed for you and your opponent. This is definitely fast. Card Destructor, speed for you and your opponent. Sp uh, Dark World Dealing, speed for you and your opponent. One Day at Peace, speed and stall, but speed for you and your opponent. Shallow Grave, speed for you and your opponent. You both special summon. Um, Compulse, nope, stall. Threatening War, stall, nope. Robin Zombie, nope. That's deck out. So that's why his speed stat is so high. The triple morphing jars, the triple morphing jars, the triple card destructions, the triple dark world dealings, the one day of peace, and the triple shallow graves. Those cards are speeding up his deck like a madman. And everyone has pot of green and gristle charity pretty much, so I'm not going to count those. But holy crap, this guy is unbelievably fast, even though he's making the opponent just as fast. But his deck is horrifying, especially the triple threatening roars. These cards are brutal. For those of you that are not too, you know, well versed with threatening roar, you need to activate this card before your opponent uh, decides on who they're attacking. Activate it during the battle phase or activate it during, um, before the battle phase. Do not activate it during a battle. If you activate it during a battle, that battle will still go through. This is your warning for whoever picks this deck. If I see you mess up, and it's not me that messed up, I will yell at you. I will. You'll hear me. Okay, going back to the character. In the show, he was super annoying and had all these lawyer cards that were, like, specifically about decking out your opponent. Super annoying to watch, and he was a lot of stall. Super annoying to watch. I felt really bad for Jaden, and I did not know how he was going to win that duel. Luckily, Jaden's the MC and has main character powers. Protagonist powers are OP, except in these tournaments. Protagonists don't win in these tournaments. They, they struggle. They really struggle. And before you say Bastion's a protagonist, go to hell. Bastion's a non-factor. He doesn't exist. Alright? Everyone forgets about him. I don't care if he's a winner of a tournament. I don't care if he wins the GX tournament in the show during Season 2, which he doesn't. But if he would won that, people would forget about him. He is so forgettable that he literally loses a duel on purpose to Chaz just to join the Society of Light because people won't hang out with him and he's so fucking lonely. All right, sorry for ranting. This is Howard's time. All right, Howard sucks. I hate him, and I hate the deck I made. I've cursed this tournament, and I've done it on purpose. We're going to watch, and you're all going to watch this curse. It reminds me of Damon, kind of, because Damon was kind of a curse on the tournament as well, but he didn't even... I don't even think he got top four, so... <laughs> As much of a curse, it wasn't that bad. Moving on to the skill stat, everything here is skill. Sangan, not really, but okay, Sasuke Samurai is a skill-based card. Morphing Jar number two is a skill-based card. Spirit Reaper skill, Needleworm skill, Morphing Jar skill, Card Destruction skill, Dark World Dealing skill, Wendy at Peace skill, Shallow Grave skill, uh, Compulse skill, Threatening Roar skill, and Robin Zombie are all skill-based. This man is the skill champion. He is the best skill character I've seen in a long time, and this deck can only win by skill because it is a deck out deck. This deck has like an almost 0% chance of winning by battle. And you know what? It also has like a 0% chance of winning by defense because this, this deck has no defense. Yeah, it has some defensive traps like Threatening Roar, Compulses, whatever. But the monster's defenses are terrible. The best defense that he has is Sasuke Samurai number 3 at 1,000 defense. And that's just not good enough. So don't even look at his defense stat. Let's look at his luck stat. He does have luck. There is a little luck to this deck. Because what you get from Morphin Jar is what you get from Morphin Jar number two. This is the most lucky card in the deck. Um, de will determine how many cards your opponent loses. If they run heavy spell trap card decks, this card can deck out your opponent very fast. If they run heavy tribute monster decks, this card can really ruin your opponent and get rid of all their monsters. Overall, Morphin Jar number two is a luck based card because it depends on what your opponent draws and you technically. Um, in fact, you got to be careful of Morphing Jar if you flip it when you still have a monster on the field. Because this deck has a lot more spells and traps than monsters. So if this happens, you could deck yourself out by accident. Moving on to his Brick stat. Surprisingly, despite the speed and despite the skill, this deck could still technically Brick. If the duel is early enough, 
I've had this happen once when I was doing the brick stat, when I was testing out the brick stat. I have started the duel with no monsters. I started with double Robin Zombie, a Threatening Roar, a Compulse, and Shallow Graves, and Big Bang Shots. These cards are bricks, okay? This is a low monster deck, so you need the draw power. When you don't have the draw power, this deck can actually a little bit brick on you, but not very often. Most of the time, you're going to be able to pop off whatever you want. That's why his brick stat is so good. He has a good brick stat because he doesn't brick very often, but it does happen, so you got to be a little careful. Overall, though, this is probably the first character I will say cannot win through battle. This character must win through deck out if you want to actually have some consistency. Because if you try to win through battle, you're just getting yourself killed. Morphin Jar in attack mode, Spirit Reaper in attack mode, Sasuke Samurai in attack mode, you're killing yourself. Just go with the deck out strategy. There's no other reason to play. There's no other way to play this deck. So... That's going to be it for Howard X. Miller. I'm going to give this deck what it deserves. It's getting a solid four stars. Four stars for Howard. Howard gets a four stars, everybody, because this deck can easily win the tournament and is a top four competitor deck, given how annoying it is. And I feel like I made it just as annoying as it was in the show, despite the fact that I couldn't use most of the same cards that he had because they're all fake. They're literally fake. I don't. They don't exist in this game. So whatever. Made a deck for him. I think it's cool. I think it's going to be fun to use. Four stars. He could totally win this tournament. It's going to take either a super fast high power deck or a super tactical deck that can negate. That's it. Other than that, you're going to like, unless you could kill your opponent so fast that none of these strats work. Or if you do piercing damage, there's no way you win this. You're going to lose super quickly. But that's going to be it for Howard. I want to thank you all for watching. If you're excited to see this deck, please uh, like and subscribe. If you're not excited to see this deck, then good. You're a normal human being. This deck should horrify you. This deck should make you feel like this tournament's going to be ruined. And I hope it is. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.